Snapdragon Gaming. <clears throat> My bad, gaming. Gaming on the Snapdragon <laughs> X Elite platform. Uh, and welcome to the channel, because if you join us for the first time, you're gonna see a lot of games that work and also some that don't, but hit that subscribe button. So Snapdragon X Elite laptops are here and gaming is something you guys are concerned about and want to see, because I like to do that too. We've got three laptops to actually check that out on. The uh, HP Omnibook, the Surface Pro 11, and the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge. Now, not all Snapdragon X Elite laptops are created equal because they have different sizes. They all have different chipsets built into them. And let's take a look at how the benchmarks for these chips for each of these laptops handle. Now, starting off with the HP Omen Book. This has the Snapdragon X Elite X1E78100. Now, this has a single core score of 1,175, multi-core of 9,776, with a GPU score OpenCL of 15,640, and the Vulkan score of 20,460. So, not bad, but those single core and multi-core scores seem kind of low to me. Now, moving over to the uh, Surface Pro 11, this has the Snapdragon X Elite X1E80100. So this is a higher chipset, and this also has higher scores with a single core score of 2,123, multi-core score of 12,690, much higher than the HP, and the OpenCL GPU scores of 18,340, and Vulkan scores of 22,346. So much impressive, much better GPU and CPU scores. Now, finally, we have, of course, the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge. Now, this is powered by the Snapdragon X Elite X1E84100. This is a higher chipset here, and this has much higher numbers, single core scores of 2,733, multi-core scores of 15,242. Now, the GPU scores OpenCL are 23,943. Vulkan scores are 27,582 much higher and the highest of the bunch. And you're wondering, what does that mean? It simply means this is probably gonna be the best for gaming because it has higher performance scores in both GPU and CPU here compared to the other two devices. Now, what games are we playing? Well, we have a ton of games, 12 in total. Apex Legends, Batman Arkham Origins, Bio, Bioshock Infinite, Cyberpunk 2077, Doom Eternal, uh, Double Dragon Neo, Dying Light, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Street Fighter 6, Street Fighter 5, The Witcher 3, and Overwatch 2. Yes, that is a lot of games. So which devices did I play most of these games on? To be honest, most of the games were played on the Galaxy Book uh, for Edge because of the better performance, and you'll see why in a second, because starting off with the HP Omnibook, I tried to play a lot of the games, it just didn't run. So, And some of those games also failed on other devices too, but the HP just didn't give me the performance I was looking for. So I tried and moved to other devices. Now, I did say some of the games didn't work, and some of the games just didn't work across any of these laptops. That includes Apex Legends, which had a CPU compatibility issue. We also had issues with Street Fighter V, which opened and just closed. Street Fighter VI opened, allowed you to select your character. I picked Ken, I was ready to use some Hadoukens and Shurikens, and then it just gave me an error with drivers. Same thing with Doom Eternal. It opened up into a small corner on the top left-hand corner of my screen, and then it cut off again. So some games just did not work. But the games that worked, what kind of benchmarks did we get? Let's start off with a fan favorite, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Played it on the Galaxy Book 4 Edge, and we got some really great good performances here. 56 to 60 frames per second, little slowdowns, but honestly, this game was very well playable at low settings, and you can see the settings on screen. Great performance there, and just great gameplay overall. I think a lot of people will like that because a Witcher 3 is a game that most people still play to this day. Now, the next game was Dying Light. Now, I played that also on the Galaxy Book 4 Edge. And here, my frame rates were about 55 to 60. Might have dipped down to a little bit to 50 at some points, but that was the average there. And this also was at low settings. Played well. The slowdowns did come out during combat in certain positions, but it's still very well playable. Now, the one thing to note is that when you're actually setting up the game on screen, make sure that you finish your settings then exit out of the game and start the game again or else you won't get the right video sizing for what you're looking for. But it did play well. Then of course we have Bioshock Infinite. Now this one took me back because I started playing and I kept on playing and I just kept on playing. 
game's fun, it was good to play. Low settings, 60 frames per second, and it handled it really well. And you know, it seems like, here's the trend, all the games looks like they will play better on this device, at least for now. So it got some really good performance there. Now, Batman Arkham Origins also played out on the Galaxy Book 4 Edge. Here, I got a wider range, 35 to 72 frames per second. You're going, that's a bit wide. Well, when you're fighting enemies, walking around, doing your batman -y stuff and hiding in the shadows, you're getting about 70 to 72 frames per second. It handles really well. Now, the times it dipped down was when I started using the grappling hook around the city. For whatever reason, it slows down in those parts, so you're getting low performance there but it still played well and honestly the game is very very playable now moving over to shadow of the tomb raider i was able to play that both on the surface pro 11 and the galaxy book 4 edge now on the surface pro 11 i on low settings i got roughly around 45 uh, frames per second sometimes up to 50 plays well solid and if you go to lower settings it goes a little bit higher than that uh, but again very playable on the surface pro 11. now on the galaxy book 4 edge i got much higher numbers for low settings, between 47 to 77 frames per second. There were no slowdowns, just depending on the area you were within the game, whether you're in a more shaded area, running around, you're finding enemies, you're getting you know, on the higher or lower end. Now, if you go to lower settings, which has no shadow details, very low textures, but still very playable, you're getting between 57 to 96 frames per second. So if you really wanna play on the road and you just kinda of wanna move and you know, extend your gameplay, that's probably the best uh, settings for you to use on the Galaxy Book 4 Edge. Now, a couple of things to mention that Microsoft mentioned about gaming on uh, Snapdragon X Elite laptops. They, they do have auto super resolution, uh, which gives you, of course, enhanced uh, resolution gameplay for the games you're playing. This should be automatic while you're gaming, but if it doesn't, you can go into your display settings, go ahead and turn that on and also turn it on for each specific game, just to ensure that you get the best performance out of your gaming experience. So that's also that's something to take note. Now, another thing with those games that didn't work is the most common error and message was of course driver issues. And that's something that has to be addressed. And I did reach out to Qualcomm and they said, look, we do have a driver update coming. It's gonna be coming in the next couple of weeks. I don't know when, I just asked because I was running too many issues. So hopefully that will come and address some of these other games that had issues across the board. Now, moving over to Overwatch 2. Now, Overwatch 2 was one where I had drastically different results from the Galaxy Book 4 Edge and the Surface Pro 11. The Surface Pro 11, um, at low settings, I was getting around 27 frames per second, sometimes it even dipped lower. It wasn't really playable and it hurt, it really hurt to play it that way. While on the, on the Galaxy Book 4 Edge, I was getting much better performance uh, from Overwatch 2, uh, getting close to about 50, 60 frames per second. Uh, there were some slowdowns, of course, during gameplay, but performance was much better and it's very much playable on that device. So that was actually good to see. And then we have Cyberpunk played it both on the Surface Pro 11 and the Galaxy Book 4 Edge. With the Surface Pro 11, it did crash a bunch of times. I was able to run the game at its lowest settings, uh, low settings resolution is 768. Um, and I got between 34 to 40 frames per second. And it was fine while running around and shooting. But once I got into a car and started driving, it crashed. Each time I drove a car, it crashed. Now on the Galaxy Book 4 Edge, I was able to run it at the same settings. Highest frame rate I got was about 72, 73. It fluctuated between 50s to 70s um, and it ran well. It did crash once, uh, but it did run well after it crashed and I was able to run the game and enjoy it for a good amount of time. So uh, Cyberpunk works especially well on the Galaxy Book 4 Edge. Now the final game, of course, is Double Dragon Neo. Now, you should expect this game to play well because this is a two and a half D uh, beat em up uh, side scroller and it runs at a solid lock 60 frames per second. This is great to see because finally a game where no issues, no slowdowns, none of that stuff, it just played well. It was good to see that there on the Galaxy Book 4 Edge. 
um, and see that kind of performance out of, out of it as well. Now, I'm not sure about the Surface Pro 11, you know, but take a look and see how that performance is. But I think it should be the same because of the kind of game it is. Now, you're, you're probably thinking, what about Xbox Game Pass? I can down some games like that there, maybe like Street Fighter uh, or Ninja Turtles or something like Halo or Forza. Well, the answer is no, because currently Xbox Game Pass only allows for cloud gaming on the platform. You cannot download any games, it will not give you the ability to do that. Hopefully that changes and hopefully Microsoft also has an update for that so games can be played from there. Because I would like to play Gears of War on the road uh, because I'm trying to get into that Gears of War spirit because Gears of War E-Day is coming out in a year. So I do have time <laughs> to go ahead and finish that off. But you get the idea here. Now I think overall, when you look at gaming on Snapdragon uh, X Elite platform, it is highly mixed. That's a nice way of saying, currently it's not doing well. Now, a lot of older games look like they will play and they will play for you at a decent level. And a lot of the newer games are having more issues. So things like Doom Eternal, uh, you know, things like um, Street Fighter VI, that didn't play well. So that's something to take note. Hopefully that driver update does come to fix these issues. And also bear in mind which kind of device you have and what chip you have in there. As you can see, the Galaxy Book 4 Edge is the one that has the, at least that I currently have, that has the highest level chipset possible that you can actually use to game on Snapdragon X Elite. So hopefully this video helped you out in some way to figure out how gaming works and handles on the Snapdragon X Elite platform. Uh, I definitely enjoyed gaming on the Galaxy Book 4 Edge and the, the Surface Pro 11 because they do have lovely displays. That OLED display just kind of stands out. The HP Omnibook, not so much. IPS is also really low in terms of just dim brightness, but you get the idea here. So if you have any questions or any comments, you want to see more games, let me know. Leave your thoughts down below. Discuss, argue, don't yell at each other, and enjoy entertainment.